Hey, what's up guys? Cloud Truth here with some more Battlefield 3 Aftermath DLC gameplay for you all. And today I've got some M27 IAR footage in the support class for you guys. I'm playing with my buddies Sword and Trevor. And for those of you that are unaware, unaware, excuse me, Trevor does have his own channel. He started up a long time ago, but uh, took a break. Now he's back. And for those of you that may be interested in that, he posts a variety of PlayStation 3 games, primarily uh primarily though he does post Battlefield. So if you're interested in that, check him out. There'll be a link on the screen in the description. But what I want to discuss with you guys today is kind of a few things about Battlefield 3 Aftermath, especially for those of you on PlayStation, or it's not PlayStation, excuse me, uh, Xbox 360 and PC that do get access on the 4th of December to this DLC. What I want to talk about is kind of a few things that uh, maybe people are overlooking or don't realize because there's been so much hype and excitement put into Aftermath. It's been so well received. Almost everyone I talk to says this is a great DLC. Occasionally you run across someone that doesn't like it, which is fine. I mean, you don't have to like this DLC. Some people enjoy the giant maps of armor kills. Some people even really enjoyed the close quarters DLC and just the craziness and just the absolute chaos that went on over there. But for the most part, a lot of people enjoy Aftermath. Why? Because this really feels like Battlefield. And not necessarily the Battlefield of old. I think for many players that has kind of moved on into the battlefield of now and that is more of the urban city engagements but they're but for the most part they're very open there's not just this close quarters craziness chaos it's more of a close quarters medium and long race type of engagements there's not just one type like on kind of your traditional battlefield maps that are going to be much more big and open but in aftermath since there has just been such great response and feedback from the PlayStation 3 uh, commentators been posting out there, including myself, which I still think this is one of the best DLCs. As far as it beating Back to Karkin, that's something we'll have to wait and see. I don't know, because Back to Karkin was an absolutely amazing DLC. I really enjoyed those maps, even though at first I was not a huge fan of them. They started to kind of grow on me after a while, and it's possible that Aftermath may do the opposite effect. Since I love them at the start, it's possible that eventually I will end up hating them, but I don't think that's going to happen. But as far as actually, you know, what's is there anything bad about this DLC? Is there anything that sh some of you guys should be aware of? Well, the first thing is that... These, these maps do flow very well for Conquest, at least on console, with the uh, minimum of, tw of uh, 24 players, 12v12, it flows very well. We'll have to see once the DLC hits on PC if that is any different when it comes to 64, how the size of the maps go, the different areas that they have, because on um, PC versus console, they do have larger areas of the map that they can travel in, just because of the abilities of the different uh, platforms that's on, but we'll have to see exactly how that handles for Conquest, it seems to do great here on console. Rush, on the other hand, is something I'm actually very worried about on PC. Why? Because on console, it suits very well. And I'm going to break my sentence off right here, just because this is something that you PC and Xbox guys need to be aware of. This will happen. You can get on top of almost every single building here on Markov's Monolith, and there will be guys, snipers, that get up there, and they will sit up there for the entire game and just snipe down. Just making you guys aware of this, it will happen, you should expect it to happen, and don't be surprised when it does. It didn't happen the first day I played, it was usually, I think actually it was the second or third day is really when that started, I began to notice it a lot more. Guys just sat up there the entire game, didn't do anything, they just sat up there and sniped. It was very frustrating, and you could tell that they just did not care about the flag caps, they were just there to get their sniper kills, and it's usually, <laughs> usually they only got like one or two for the whole entire game, but it just, it will happen, and it's frustrating and quite annoying. But getting back to my point about the rush in Aftermath, it works, I think, pretty good on console with the 12v12. When you start getting, I think, into PC with the 32 and 64 man player servers, I think that's when you may start to run into a little bit of a trouble. Because on 12v12, it's a, for me personally, I think that's about as max of players as you need. You don't really need many more than that. But, once again, guys, this is something we'll have to wait and see because it, they... Like I said previously, they get access to it on the 4th of December, so it's very, very soon right around the corner, and hopefully uh, it will be a great DLC for both those guys, and a lot of the Xbox and PC commentators will really enjoy it, and I think they will. I think it's a great DLC. DICE did a good job on this, and overall, I'm very pleased with how it's turned out so far. Crossbow is a lot of fun. Like I said, maps are great for both Rush and Conquest. However, Rush is something I think that perhaps may be a little bit better suited on console and not so much PC. But once again, we'll have to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Leave any thoughts about this commentary you had below. If you enjoyed it, perhaps consider giving it a rating. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.